when was the last time you made something? Now, maybe some of you have made a meal in the past week. Perhaps you've even made your bed. Maybe not. <laughs> but when was the last time you made some physical object that you needed? You see, instead of going to the store and buying something that was made halfway across the world, I want you to make stuff. How? 3D printing is a technology that will enable you to make stuff. You see, I believe that 3D printing is going to spark the next industrial revolution. A revolution where you make what you need, when you need it, and it is fully customized to your individual needs. Today, I'd like to tell you about our innovative research with 3D printing, and specifically how we're using nanomaterials to increase the strength of 3D printed parts. 3D printing, or additive manufacturing, is different than conventional manufacturing in that material is built up layer by layer as opposed to removing it. Now, there's several different ways you can do this, but generally speaking, they can all be categorized by the type of raw material input and the way in which that material is built up and bonded to form a solid object. Today, the printer that you'd most likely buy and uh, is used as a home desktop unit and is also used for industrial methods to prototype stuff relies on melt extrusion. With this method, a printer filament, which I have here, kind of looks like a weed whacker string, is fed through an extruder nozzle. This is similar to a hot glue gun. Now this lays down material Layer, <coughs> layer by layer, building up material precisely where it's needed. This is repeated vertically to make the object in a third dimension, hence 3D printing. Now, in order to make something useful with this, you kind of have to have instructions for where to put this material. So you would start with a 3D file that you design on a computer. You can either make it yourself in CAD, or you can download it from the internet this model of a buckyball was downloaded from Thingiverse free. Now, <clears throat> this buckyball model was then inputted into a software program that takes it and slices it up into hundreds of paper-thin layers. The software then sends instructions to the 3D printer, which then lays down material exactly where it's being told to, and this recreates the digital object physically. I have with me here the 3D completed buckyball. Very strong, fun to play with, and great for visualiz visualization. Now, that's great. You can make whatever you need. So what's the problem? What do we need to fix? If we wanted to use 3D printed parts for high strength applications, the problem is, is that when you look at these materials, the weakness is in the interface between these layers. If you zoom into those paper-thin layers, if you, were apply, if you were to apply too great a force, the material would fail at that weak interface. So, what is the solution to this problem? Nanomaterials are the solution that we've found. So, what exactly is a nanomaterial? If we look to the scale of things, the nanomaterial dimension has at, least, uh, has at least one dimension between 1 and 100 nanometers. This is very small. If we were to, I work with multi-wall carbon nanotubes, which are rolled up sheets of carbon. If you were to take 1,000 of these and lay them side by side, that would be about as thick as a human hair. A nanometer for reference is a billionth of a meter. Now, carbon nanotubes, because of their small size and the way in which those carbon atoms are bonded, have some very unique properties. In addition to being stronger than steel and more thermally and electrically conductive than copper, carbon nanotubes have a unique response to microwave energy. That is, they heat up rapidly. Evidence of this can be found on YouTube. Uh, this guy simply places a little bit of carbon nanotubes in his microwave oven and in a few seconds, uh, you can see that these 
tend to explode upon heating. Needless to say, do not try this at home in your kitchen. Don't do it. It's not safe. Um, so that's great and all, but what does this have to do with 3D printing? How can we use this? The eureka moment came when we realized that we could take the unique properties of carbon nanotubes, add them to 3D printed parts, and expose them to microwaves to increase the strength of the part. How exactly do we do this? Remember those weak interfaces? If we take carbon nanotubes and we put them right at that weak interface, and then we expose it to microwave energy, in a few seconds, those interfaces heat up rapidly, welding all of those layers together. Now the pure polymer doesn't absorb the microwave energy, so it stays cool. We do this by taking this original printer filament and coating it in a carbon nanotube ink. I have the, uh, one of the coated printer filaments right here. This produces a coaxial filament, which can then be fed into a printer. Now, in order to prove this concept was plausible, we took this printer filament that's been coated, and we laid it up into a crosshatch. We then took this, put it into a microwave, microwaved it for a few seconds, and the entire thing bonded together into one fully fused structure. So we had proved the concept was plausible. Now, in order to view this process more directly, we were able to make a bundle of these filaments, like so. With the help of a colleague, we took these, put them into a microwave, and then exposed it and looked at the heating process using an infrared camera. As you can see, the polymer core remains initially cool, while that thin coating of carbon nanotube heats up rapidly. It's this intense and rapid heating which allows us to weld these layers together, strengthening the part. We've been able to put this into practice by feeding that filament into a 3D printer that we bought off the shelf and producing samples for mechanical testing. You can see here clearly the carbon nanotube modified and microwave bonded cylinder was highly resistant to compressive loads. Needless to say, we're very excited about how this can improve the strength of 3D printed parts. So, that's cool. Where might this technology be applied in your life? Imagine you've gone to the store, bought the next generation of smartphone, and you wanted to get a case for it, but you didn't find any that you liked at the store. Go online, browse thousands of customizable designs, put your name on it, and then print it out using super strong carbon nanotube modified and microwave bonded plastic. Now, I know some of you are kind of into sci-fi movies. I like them too. Maybe you just gotta have that Han Solo case. It's okay. <laughs> Go home, download it, print it out. You can have it. Now, this is really cool, but I believe that car beyond carbon nanotubes, nanomaterials are going to open the door for a wide variety of printing applications. You see, I know some of you enjoy action-adventure sports, and if you're anything like me, you don't like hospitals all that much. Uh, one day, I imagine, if you were able to, if you had a minor break or sprain, that you would simply scan in your arm use a software program to generate a case, uh, a ca cast that's made specifically for your injury, and it's printed out. With the right combination of nanomaterials, you will have precise control over the optical, the thermal, electrical, and magnetic mechanical properties of the 3D printed object. By controlling where these nanomaterials are placed and how they are assembled, one day, you might just download the next generation of smartphone and simply print it out. Now, going beyond this, the future application is that if you were to use all these materials, you're going to be able to reduce waste by recycling old materials. It's going to reduce transportation and manufacturing costs. And it's going to totally revolutionize consumerism by promoting sustainability in manufacturing. And that 
is a future I think we can all believe in. Thank you.